Hello everyone, it's Kyle from Iris, and I'm just going to take you through how to calibrate your yoke. You shouldn't need to do this, but uh, if anybody's experiencing any troubles, then uh, this might be able to shed some light on what's going on, and possibly even just straight up fix it. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is install a couple programs. Uh, one is the Arduino programming environment, and the other is an add-on for it. So to find that, you just go to Arduino. Uh, as a Google search, first link is what you're looking for. Under Downloads, you're going to select the one that pertains to your operating system. We're using Windows here. As well, you're going to need to search for what's called Teensy Duino, and that's an add-on for the Arduino environment. So the first link again is what you're looking for, and you just select your operating system. So, so for your install, you're just going to select the default settings, and when you're installing TT Duino, it's going to ask you what libraries you want to install. You don't have to install any of them. If you don't want, you won't be needing them. So once Arduino is done installing, and you've installed the TT Duino add-on, all you need to do is open up the Arduino environment, and then under Tools, select TT 3.1 for your board, and under USB Type, Flight Sim Controls. Once you've done that, you can click on the Serial Monitor icon in the top right hand corner and you'll get this screen. Now, with your yoke plugged in, you can just type some gibberish and just to confirm that everything's working right, you will get a help message that gives you some commands that you can play around with if you like. What we're most interested in though is how to calibrate the device. So, you just type in Calibrate and your yoke is going to turn on and enter calibration mode and there'll be just a glowing blue light that you can see there. The first calibration that's going to come up is to calibrate the sensors. All you need to do for this one is just move the handle back and forth and left and right until the values stop changing. So basically through the full range of motion. And once that's done you're going to press button 2, which is reachable with your left finger um, on the left hand side of the yoke. You're going to press button 2, which is reachable by your left finger, and that's going to save the data. If you want to skip a calibration step at any time, you're just going to use the left thumb button instead. Next one that comes up is current sense calibration. This is how the device knows how, how warm it's going to be. To do this calibration, it's very straightforward. You just push the yoke all the way forward and then hold it against the case because it might try and come out on you a little bit. You want it to stay still when you're doing this. And another thing to note is you want the device to be cool when you do this calibration. So make sure that the device has been off for you know about an hour or so before you run this one. All you need to do is just hold it up against the case and press the left finger button and wait. And there she is. The last calibration sequence is for the point of view hat and to calibrate that all you need to do is rotate the hat in circles until the values stop changing like they have there. And when you're happy you press the left finger button again. Again, to skip any of these calibrations and leave the previous data, you just press the left thumb instead. Once the calibration's done, your device will restart and it should be good to go. Well, there she is. I'm just going to go through some of the different button combinations and commands that you can send your yoke using just the handle. The first ten maybe the most commonly used is going to be how to turn it off. To do that, you just press down the left finger button, the left thumb button, that's buttons one and two, and trim down. And the logo will go blue and get dimmer and turn off. Now uh, the device is in a deep sleep, so it won't wake up when you just move it a little bit. You'll need to go all the way forward, all the way back, all the way left, and all the way right. And it'll wake back up for you. If you would like to change the strength on, say, just the pitch axis. You're going to hold 
the right two buttons down and then you're going to release the finger button and you can trim up and you can trim down the forces and that will be indicated by the color of the logo on the front so redder colors indicate more force bluer, co bluer colors indicate less force so we'll turn it all the way up it'll flash when it's at full power and so we got some stiff movement there and then we can turn it down and if you go all the way down to where it's flashing that'll disable forces on the y-axis so now there's no feedback there at all same thing goes for the roll axis uh, it's the same button combination except instead of releasing your finger you release your thumb so we trim it all the way up we got strong roll resistance and if we trim it all the way down There's zero roll resistance. If you want to adjust both of the forces at the same time, so roll and pitch as a balanced pair, you can use the left side. You hold the left finger and thumb button down, and then release the thumb. And you can trim up the forces together. So again, redder is, is higher. So right now, both of the forces should be at max force. And they are. As well, if you want to turn down the brightness on the logo LED, you hold the left two buttons and release the left finger button. And now you can adjust the brightness on the front of the display. Up and down, it'll flash when it's max brightness. And you can trim it all the way down so that you have no illuminated logo.